All right, and we are back here on the GSMC Football Podcast. And for the third part of the show, we're going to talk about uh, the Buccaneers winning the NFC South. Obviously, that was one of our favorite divisions to talk about throughout the year um, because we just had no idea who was going to win. At one, one week, it was the Falcons. One week, it was the Saints. But ultimately, it ended up being, um, and then obviously, you know, the Bucks, of course, and uh, the Bucks were able to take it. And they scared me a little bit because, you know, they lost to the Saints, didn't look good. And then, um, you know, they only they only ended up beating the Panthers 9-0. You know, it just uh, it wasn't an impressive win, you know. But, hey, listen, they were able to get it done. They're in the playoffs now. See, this is what worries me, though, going into this playoff game, though, against the Eagles, is the fact that they were hot for a few weeks, and then all of a sudden against the Saints and the Panthers, now they look flat. And now this is why I think the Eagles can still win. But, again... We'll see what happens. Um, but listen, for the Bucks, um, again, like the Packers, I mean, I, well, I don't know if the Packers were supposed to be one of the worst teams in football, but the Bucks were definitely looked at as a team that was going to be really bad this year. Because now no Tom Brady, um, you know, bringing in Baker Mayfield. It just seemed like, you know, and, and you lost some guys, obviously. Um, it, it looked like the Bucks were going to be a bad team. You know, but... Listen, give them credit, uh, you know, and Todd Bowles uh, being the head coach. They uh, they were able to make it. Um, Baker Mayfield finished with a 94.6 um, QB rating, um, 28 touchdowns to 10 interceptions, 4,000 yards passing, um, put together a good season. Now, the final game of the regular season was not great. Well, the last two games of the regular season were not great. I mean, Baker... 137 yards passing, 20 of 32. Um, yeah, they, it just wasn't great. And the Panthers, they left some points off the board. Um, if we can go back to when that... Yeah, so there was a fumble. This would have put them, the Panthers up. Um, Bryce Young connected with DJ Chark for a 43-yard touchdown. But he ended up fumbling the ball right before he, cl- he crossed the plane... And uh, Antoine Winfield picked it up. Actually, no, he caused the fumble. Uh, Jamel Dean, he uh, recovered it. So that was one touchdown that was left off the board. And then I don't remember where the other one was uh, because it was um, – so the running back uh, for the uh, for the Panthers, um, Raheem uh, Blackshear, um, he ran in a touchdown, but that got called back for, a, I, I believe, a holding penalty. So – you know, if they, if they end up scoring points out of that, you know, what? who knows what ends up happening. The Bucks end up pro- probably losing, and then the Saints end up winning the division. Um, so, yeah, I don't feel great uh, for the Bucks going into this game against the Eagles, but, listen, I'm happy for Baker. I think, I mean, they could definitely win this game on Monday. I mean, it's, they definitely, uh, the Eagles are a different team than they were the last time they played each other. Um, you know, so this is going to be, this is going to be a close game. Um, you know, and, and, you know, prior to these last two weeks, the Bucks were playing really well offensively. Baker Mayfield was playing well. Um, so I'm, I'm hoping that they win, you know, of course, being a giant fan, um, you know, and the Eagles, the downward spiral that they've been on, uh, you know, I, I just can't believe it, like how bad they're playing. And now they got guys that are hurt. You know the Bucks have a good the, the Bucks have a really good chance to win the the game on Monday. Um, obviously, we're not gonna we'll, we'll talk about it more throughout the week and on Monday, of course. Um, and it's just weird how they were playing. They played on Monday night, right, in Tampa. These two teams, and now they're gonna be playing on Monday night again. These two teams on ESPN. You know they couldn't give ESPN a different game. I don't know. But that's just how uh, that's just how it is, because you know, of course, Fox has to get the Cowboys. Um, NBC wants NBC ended up getting uh, you know the Lions and the um, well, they got three games. They got the four. They got the four thirty game, and then they got the uh, on Saturday, and they got the Peacock game later that day, and then of course they have the Sunday night game, and then CBS only has one game. Uh, CBS and CBS, Fox, and ESPN all have one game. Uh, NBC has three basically um which i'm a little curious on how 
uh, when it comes to the broadcasters, who's going to be doing those games? Uh, but we'll see. Because, I mean, Collinsworth and Tariqa will be there for Sunday night, but are they also doing the Peacock game on Saturday? So are they going to do the Kansas City game, and then they're going to fly out to Detroit? Because I they might have... Because um, I know they had uh, Iron Eagle's son do uh, the um, the steelers Bengals game uh, for that NBC doubleheader. So maybe they're going to do the same thing. I don't know. All right, that got off topic. Um, but anyways, with I mean... With this, with this division though, with the with the NFC South, I mean, listen, I I hope that Baker stays as the quarterback at least for next year. Um, I feel like, you know, he has earned the right to start another year for Tampa. Um, but I think you know they should definitely consider. You know, we'll see if they uh you know maybe take a quarterback so he can sit behind uh Baker. Um, cause I don't know. I, I mean, I don't know if Baker's going to be the long-term answer there, you know, but I think the fact that he was able to play well this year and they were able to win a division, a title, um, you know, it was, uh, you know, it's, it, it's good. It's, it's good. It's, um, it's impressive, you know, what they were able to do. Um, you know, cause also they had, you know, a messy cap situation, you know, um, so that's why it was just like people weren't sure if they were going to be uh if they were going to be a good team but um yeah they were able to finish 9 and 8 make the playoffs I mean listen and now it's uh, anything can happen um but uh you know if the Saints ended up making it the Saints would have been coming in hot because you know the last two games were really impressive for them um you know they they beat the Bucks of course you know in week 17 and then, uh, you know, against the Falcons, they won 48-17, to and they lost to them earlier in the year in Atlanta. And uh, Derek Carr played probably his best game of the year, I would say, or one of the, you know, I would say this was his best game. Four touchdowns, no interceptions, 22-28, 264 yards passing. They had no Alvin Kamara in this game, and they still ran the ball for over 150 yards. Uh, their rookie, uh, Kendra Miller, he had 73 yards rushing and a touchdown. Taysom Hill had 51 yards rushing. Uh, Jamal Williams had 26 rushing yards and a touchdown. Um, A.T. Perry had two touchdowns in this game. Olave had one, which was a which was an impressive uh, catch. He uh, got juggled up in the air and he was able to hold on to it. Um, if you guys know what I'm talking about. Um, and then uh, Rashid Shahid caught a deep touchdown pass, a long touchdown pass. Um, he had three receptions for 65 yards. Yeah, the Saints ended up. Um, that was a, that was a Blowout win for them, um, and it was clo- it was close. I mean, the Falcons were up fourteen to seven after the first quarter. Um, you know, they uh, they scored on their first drive. Uh, then, well, then the Sa- well, actually, both teams scored on their first. Uh, well, the Saints punted to start of the game, but then Falcons scored a touchdown. Saints scored a touchdown. Falcons scored another touchdown. Saints scored another touchdown. So it was fourteen fourteen um, after the first quarter. Actually, so I don't know why on the box score it has. Uh, well, I guess because that drive led into the uh, the second quarter, um, but yeah, like the second touchdown, that was a a seventy one yard reception by uh, Bijan Robinson for a touchdown. I mean, the Saints, you know, just did not cover him, and he was left open. And Desmond Ritter actually had to get the start in this game because uh, Taylor Heineke um, uh, got ruled out because uh, he was injured, um, and they actually ended up putting in Logan Woodside at one point. Um, but yeah, Desmond Ritter threw a pick in this game. Um, yeah. And then, uh, at the end of the game, it was weird. So the saints were in victory formation, but then they decided they just were going to run a play to get Jamal Williams a touchdown. And that just caused this whole, uh, you know, controversy because they ended up scoring a touchdown because Jamal Williams, he, he led the league in rushing touchdowns last year and he had none this year. And, the Saints got him a touchdown. Jameis Winston was in at quarterback for that play. Um, and, uh, yeah, Arthur Smith was not happy. He was, yell- he was yelling at Dennis Allen, and Dennis Allen in the press conference apologized to him. And, well, now Arthur Smith is out of a job. And, you know, now it's just talking about, like, sportsmanship and things like that. I mean, I guess, like, yeah, you probably shouldn't have lined up in victory formation, so then, you know, not to catch the Falcons off guard, but 
I mean, it's 41 to 17 already. I mean, does it really matter? I mean, that was that, that's what, you know, you know, that was on Jameis. Jameis is the one that, you know, they orchestrated that. You know, that wasn't it doesn't seem like that was Dennis Allen's call. That wasn't De Dennis Allen's call. Um but but yeah, I, I do agree also. It's like, well, then don't give up 41 points to the Saints. You know, this was a big game for both teams, and one team showed up and the other one didn't. Well, I mean, one team showed up. I mean, both teams showed up, you know, for the, you know, the first uh, quarter and a half, but then it was just all Saints the rest of the way. Um, So, yeah, I mean, the, the for the Eagles, they're lucky they don't have to play the Saints because they'd have to go to New Orleans, and the way Derek Carr was playing the last two weeks, yeah, you're lucky the Saints didn't make the playoffs. But you know what? Shame on the Saints. If they were consistent throughout the year, they'd be in the playoffs right now. But... You know, the early season struggles uh, and the inconsistencies, and that's why you're on the outside looking in. You know, but for a lot of these teams, it, it takes a while for them to get going. And the Saints, you know, took them basically to the end to, you know, be like, hey, we're the Saints. We, we got a good team. What, like, what are we doing? Um, but, yeah, they're on the outside looking in. And now we'll see what happens with the Falcons. With the Are they going to get a new head coach? Well, actually, they are going to get a new head coach. What am I saying? Just said Arthur Smith is going to get fired, is fired. Um, so we'll see what they end up doing there. Are they going to have a new quarterback? That's the other thing. Um, you know, because, you know, there's rumors about uh, Justin Fields maybe getting traded. Um, you know, depending on what the Bears decide to do, if they say, you know what, we're going to go in a different direction, maybe. Uh, it's possible. But, um, or uh, maybe they... Uh, they take one in the draft. Uh, we'll find out, um, you know, in the coming months. We'll see what ends up happening. Um, but, yeah, uh, the Bucks, NFC South champions. And, uh, like I said, they, uh, they'll they be playing the Eagles on Monday. And we'll continue to talk about that throughout the week. Because now, uh, now it's just the NFL. And then before you know it, it's going to be over. And then, uh, you know, then it's really just we talk about the draft. And uh, I guess, you know, maybe here and there talk about spring football because that'll start up. Um, but, yeah, that's where we're at right now. So when we come back from our final break of the show, um, we're going to talk about the Steelers getting back to the playoffs as well. I mean, it's I, I kind of labeled the, uh, the segments for both them and the Packers, but I, I just – I tried to word them differently – as best as I could because it kind of just, um, you know, it's pretty much the same topic. It's, oh, the Packers made it. We didn't expect that. Steelers made it. Yeah, it didn't really. Uh, well, the Steelers, like, they, I think earlier in the season, I think more people would say the Steelers were more likely to make the playoffs than the Packers. If you were comparing the two teams, if one of them was going to make it, the Steelers were going to be more likely to. But now they're both in. Well, and then it then it changed. Like I said, roller coaster. This is another team roller coaster season. So um, we'll get into them uh, when we come back from our uh, final break of the show. So for the final time, stick around, and we'll be right back here on the GSMC Football Podcast. <laughs> 